Good morning, Help Club. How are you guys doing today? My name is Deb, and I'm so excited to be here for this week's Mentoring Monday. How was your Thanksgiving? Was it good? Are you feeling a little stressed today? I don't know, you guys. I woke up this morning, and I was feeling so stressed. And um, I really learned a lot, even this morning, just a little bit this morning, God really spoke to me, and I wanted to share it with you because I feel like if I'm stressed, I bet you guys are stressed. Um, because I don't have kids in my home, but we had a crazy Thanksgiving and looking ahead to everything we have coming up, I was overwhelmed this morning. And so I can only imagine how you guys are feeling, especially if you have little kids or uh, if you're just a busy mom, I know that you guys are feeling stressed. And so I wanted to talk about that today. And if you're new to Help Club, you can find us at helpclubformoms.com. And every Monday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, we do live videos. And we love to talk back and forth and so um, when you come on, please say hello. Say hello, and I have a little question for you. Uh, since we're talking about um, how to uh, not have a lot of Christmas stress today in the video, what is one thing that you guys do to help you to not have Christmas stress? What is one thing that helps you to not have so much Christmas stress? So let's share our ideas. And if I was sharing my idea, I'm gonna share my big idea today as the Mentoring Monday, but another thing that I really feel helps me to uh, to not be stressed out is to make lists. And uh, if you're not a list maker, it might be new to you, but it really does help. If you are a list maker, you've probably already made 10 lists already for Christmas. Um, but I haven't made all of my lists, but I began to sit and think about like what I want to buy for people, um, what I'm going to serve on Christmas, um, how what we're going to be doing, and my budget for Christmas. And so what do you guys do? But first, say hello. I'm going to say hello to everybody. Um, hi, Kendra and Janelle. Oh, Janelle Praise. Yes, that is the best thing to do, Janelle. Thank you for sharing that. That is the best thing. Okay, so Yvonne, good morning, and Crystal, and Clarissa, and Michelle. I'm so glad to see you guys today. Okay, so what is the number one thing that you do that helps you? So Clarissa says, uh, we shop early and do Advent. That is an excellent idea. That is such a good idea. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, I love Advent too. We have a great um, study coming up in the next, <clears throat> starting next week, which uh, helps us at Christmas and Advent time in our book, in our, in our book right now. But um, I want to open us up in prayer and you guys can keep uh, leaving your comments about what you do to not have as much Christmas stress. I mean, we're all gonna have stress. That's the reality, is we're gonna have stress. But how can we minimize our stress? How can we think logically about our Christmas to where um, we're not gonna have as much stress? But I want to pray and open us up in prayer. Uh, God, I thank you so much that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, um, that you uh, never leave us. And God, I pray that every single person watching this video today would feel your love. They would uh, know, they would be able to grasp, just like the word says, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that they'd be able to feel the measure, the full measure of God. And uh, God, that's just amazing to even think about being able to know and to have that full measure. And so we love you. And um, Lord, you know that I've had a stressful morning already, and I bet a lot of my friends who are going to be tuning in today have had one as well. So God, help us to encourage each other through this video. Come Holy Spirit, speak through me. Help my mind to be clear. Help me not to be stressed. Help me not to worry about what I'm going to say. Just say what you want these moms to hear and dads, uh, whoever join in today. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Okay, so I'll, hi Jen, good to see you. Um, if you guys could click share, that would be so helpful. You have no idea. Um, we, uh, you guys, most of you guys know this, that we're an all volunteer ministry. We're a nonprofit, but the Help Club for Moms is an all volunteer ministry. And so we don't have a lot of money. We just, um, my husband and I pay for a lot of expenses with Help Club, but we take donations and anytime you can share our stuff or leave a comment on our, on any of our posts, 
Facebook has gotten really challenging lately to where um, it's really hard to get your posts even to our followers to see for our followers to see our posts if you don't click like our page and click see first you may not see our, our posts because we don't spend a lot of money we spend a dollar a post uh, and that's all we have that's our budget right now and so if you can click share that would help us so much anytime that you could click share that would be awesome okay so let's see uh, Clarissa said I peeked ahead and I'm so excited about the Christmas countdown yes okay Clarissa thank you because I have this to show today if you have our book uh, the wise woman um, abides that's our book that we're going through right now at the help club and it's not too late to get that book we're gonna be going all the way through Christmas and through New Year's and the studies in the wise woman abides book are absolutely fantastic and they will help you to go through Christmas and to be mindful of Jesus okay and so in the book we have these uh, print well I have them right here but I'm gonna put them for you guys um, it's called the 20 days of Christmas cheer it's uh, it's like a countdown and it's different ideas that we have and I'm gonna put these printables in the comments for the live video so you may not have the book right now but you can still uh, print this out so I'm gonna do that whenever we get done today so be sure to check back uh, in the comment section for the 20 days of Christmas cheer but it's like a, it's a countdown and so like let's see here day it's just fun things that you can do with your kids so day one is have a birthday party for Jesus buy a little cake or treat and celebrate our oh wait that's backwards hold on <laughs> sorry I'm sorry we're we I'm not exactly the most detailed person. So, um, so it's it's 20 days. So I guess we're starting on December 5th. That's right. Okay, but you can start whenever you want to. But let's look at day 20. Day 20 is make a Christmas countdown paper chain out of red and green construction paper with 20 circles. Hang it somewhere for all to see in your home. Okay, I love that idea. And for you, look up these verses. Isaiah 7, 14, John 1, 14, Galatians 4, 4 through 5, Isaiah 9, 6, uh, 1 John 5, 11, and choose your favorite one and work on memorizing it this Christmas. And then day 19, read the story of Jesus' birth to your kids from Luke 2, 1 through 21. Have your kids draw pictures of their favorite parts of the story and then ask them to tell you about all the aspects of the story as you write on the illustration. Anyway, it's just really sweet. So I'm going to put these in the comments, but it starts December 5th. You could start now if you want to, but it goes all the way through till Christmas. But it's just a little way that you can be practical with your kids and helping everyone to focus on Jesus because I, I, wanna, I want you guys to think about something for me just for a minute let's all think about this thought and I, I wrote a little Bible study in our new in this book uh, towards Christmas and it's called whose birthday are we celebrating and you guys whose birthday are we celebrating we are celebrating Jesus's birthday and so you know I think that during the holiday season if you can remember that we are celebrating Jesus's birthday and if you're like me whenever my kids were growing up in my home and they would have a birthday I'd think okay what would the birthday boy or birthday girl like the most for their birthday what would make their party more special their celebration and I would do those things that made them feel loved and you guys it's Jesus's birthday and so what are the things that would make Jesus feel most loved and I think the biggie and we're gonna talk about this today is is loving like Jesus but those are things that you can be thinking about but like the Christmas countdown helps you to keep your kids focused and yourself focused on Jesus to where you can celebrate him all month long you know from now until the end of Christmas even though you're busy you can still be mindful of him okay so I just I'm gonna that's what the Christmas countdown is all about it's so good okay so today we're talking about Christmas stress and so when I woke up this morning I I was really stressed you guys I drove um, when did I drive I drove uh, I can't even remember what my life's like so a week ago on Sunday the Sunday before Thanksgiving we drove to Illinois to go be with my husband's family we had a great time then on Friday Black Friday we drove back home I was like 15 hours drove back home and then Saturday my daughter and I went shopping and then yesterday we did our family Thanksgiving because our kids stay here our daughters with her husband's family and our son was with his girlfriend's family and so we just were crazy during Thanksgiving and I woke up this morning and I was like Lord 
and there were some things that happened on Facebook and um, so I have to help with all the posts on Facebook you guys we don't have this big staff this big team we're all just normal moms just average everyday moms who read the Bible and we love encouraging moms that's what we are at the help club and so this morning I, I looked at the Facebook and I noticed that the post wasn't posted to where you could even see it and so I had to fix that and then I had to fix this other thing and then I was like Lord I don't even have very much time with you this morning and I need to do a video and I was feeling really discouraged and I was like oh I just really wish I had some time with him and then a sweet friend of mine uh, messaged me this song over Facebook and I want to read this, the lyrics to you because I think that there's a lot of practical ways that we can eliminate stress at Christmas but what I want to talk to you about today is your state of being this Christmas your state of being, the state of your heart, the state of your soul. I mean, if your soul is filled, if your soul is peaceful, you can do anything. You can accomplish anything. You can have a great Christmas and not be stressed out if your soul is full. But if your soul is not full, if you're just running on empty like I was this morning, if you're just running and running and running and running, then your soul, you're gonna be giving from an empty well. You guys, we can't give from an empty well. You're gonna be grouchy, you're gonna yell at your kids. I mean, that's the way I was. And even today, I was grouchy. This morning, I was driving. I mean, I, I need to have 30 minutes of exercise, at least in the morning. And so I was just going to exercise for 30 minutes. But I was behind the slowest car in the world on the way to the gym. And I mean, I was starting to get aggravated. I'm like, Lord, I don't want this stuff in my heart. I don't want this stress in my heart. And so I start, my friend sent me this song and it's called um, Listen. And I want to read the lyrics to you, but I started listening to this song and it was like the Lord just really met me uh, today, even in my drive. And I want to tell you guys, God is big enough to meet you where you are. If you're stressed about money, if you're stressed about your marriage, if you're stressed about a child, you guys, God is big enough. He's there. He's always speaking. And let me read this song to you. And you should listen to it today. It's called Listen by Laura Woodley Osman, O-S-M-A-N. And listen to these lyrics. Quiet your heart, quiet your mind, be as still as you can. Spirit inside, you are alive, come to full attention. Listen, your father is speaking his word right to your heart. Look now, he's showing you pictures. He's here to meet you right where you are. When you see, when you hear, write it down. What you see, when you hear, go slowly, go in thanks, go in praise, go in love, go in grace. Ask for wisdom and be filled with faith. The kingdom is heaven, of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is within your reach. The kingdom will come on earth as in heaven when it's the king. Is that what you seek? You guys, this is the most beautiful song because it, it's practical. It's like it tells you what to do. It says, quiet your heart, quiet your mind, be as still as you can be. And as I was listening to that, I was like, Lord, she's right. Help me to quiet my mind. Help me to quiet my heart. And so as you're being busy this year, write a note. You guys, I have sticky notes all over my house. One I have on my counter uh, by my teacups. It's the first thing I see in the morning because I have tea in the morning. And it says, what if I only had one year to live? I always want to keep that in front of me. What if I only had one year to live? But write a note. Quiet your heart, Deb. Quiet your heart, Rachel. Quiet your heart, Clarissa. You know, write yourself a note and put it where you'll see it. And then I love what she says. Write it down. When you see something that God is showing you, when you hear it, write it down. Ask for wisdom and be filled with faith. And just know that he's speaking to you. This song says, listen, your father is speaking. And I think so much of the time, I mean, I feel this way sometimes, that I have to have all my ducks in a row to do good, to have a good day. But that's not the truth. We don't have to have all of our ducks in a row. And, and for me this morning, I didn't even get to spend as much time as I, as I like to in the Word before doing this video. And I had like five minutes, but I listened to that song over and over. And I was just praying and I was saying, Lord, you know that I'm your daughter. You know that, um, that, 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 you, that you called me to do these videos. You know, I know this. You told me to do these videos. You called me to do Help Club. I need you. And you guys, with your Christmas, with your children, whatever you're doing, you know, we've been getting a lot of response from step families, um, step moms that are struggling with their step kids. God called you to be a step mom to those step kids. You guys, God has called you in your, in your place where you are in your home or at your job or with your children. He's called you there and he's going to help you. I was, I was thinking about the scripture and I wanted to read it to you today. Grab your Bible. It is, oh, Mary Jo, I'm so glad to hear that. It, it was a timely word for me today 
that God will meet you. He's always there. He never leaves you. You don't have to check off all your ducks in a row. You, you don't have to have everything perfect. Yes, we should try on most days to have, you know, I like to spend, I mean, whenever I was a young mom, I spent 15 minutes a day reading the Bible. And then it, it got a little longer. Now I'm regular to 30 minutes a day. I read the Bible and I write in my journal. But I pray throughout the day. You know, I pray with friends. Like the Help Club for Moms talks about praying with a prayer partner. We believe in it. And I'm praying that you guys pray with a prayer partner too because it will really change your life if you pray with a friend. That's another thing. Call a friend once a week. Say, I want to call you every week during Christmas especially to pray for our families to have a great Christmas. To pray for God to help us. And so let me read this to you. I want you to listen to this. And I love this. This is King David. And you guys, King David was busy, okay? He was busy. For him to write this psalm, it's Psalm 131. He was a busy man. He had enemies around him. He, he had a kingdom to run. He had so much going on. But do you know what he said? King David came to the Lord and he said, My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. Can you imagine King David saying that? I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. King David had a lot of things to think about, but he just said, but listen to this, but I have stilled and quieted my soul, my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. David was a king, but he knew for his kingdom and all the people that were following him, that they need to put their hope in the Lord. And you need to put your hope in the Lord. And your children need to put their hope in the Lord. Your husband needs to put his hope in the Lord. And I love that, but I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. And you guys, sometimes our souls can be restless, but God is saying to calm them like a weaned child, like a weaned child. Like I, I love my little friends that have nursing babies because their babies, when they hop in their lap, they're like, ah, 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 ah. And then they start crying until the mom gets them latched on. And, but if you see a weaned child in a mother's lap, he's resting, he's sitting, he's calm. So much of the time we can feel like that nursing baby. We're just desperate and desperate and desperate. But God wants us to still and quiet our soul. And ask him to help you to still and quiet your soul like a weaned child. And you know what else I was going to tell you? For, right, look this up. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. You know, King David, this is King David again. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. And, you know, there was a lot going on in chapter 30. I don't have time to read the whole chapter but it was about the Amalekites and he just had a lot going on and a lot of people coming against him and his wives had been captured. And I mean, it was a very stressful time. He was greatly. So if you look at first Samuel 30 verse six, starting in verse six, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter and they were bitter because their wives were taken. But, but so it says each one of them was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters and their sons and daughters were taken. But look at what this, look at what the word says. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. And you know, some of the versions say, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. And you guys, we need to be encouraging ourselves in the Lord. And the way you do this is ask him to help you. You know, you guys, he loves you so much more than you could ever know. He's with you. He never leaves you. Ask him to help you to encourage yourself. Ask him to help you not to be stressed. Ask him to help you to calm and quiet your soul. And just even if your children are around, you know, I think of Susanna Wesley a lot where she took her apron over her head and for an hour a day, she prayed for her children. And she had 10 kids and several of them died. She had other kids that died and she had 10 living children. And the kids knew when mama is praying, don't mess with mama. But you know, a lot of us don't have that luxury. Our kids will still mess with us. But take the time during the day just to, to lift up a prayer to the Lord. Lord, help me today. I'm feeling stressed. Help me with these kids. Help me to cook breakfast. Help me to do this laundry. You know, help me to love my husband. Help me not to fight with him when he gets home. Help me not to grouch at this coworker. Help us financially. Ask Jesus continually for help. He loves you. He wants to help you. And then the last thing I want to say is as you're thinking about Christmas, 
I want you to think about, like I talked about earlier in the video, if you're just tuning in, go back to the beginning of the video, and just to think about whose birthday are you celebrating? And I'm gonna be talking about this a whole lot because this is what I'm studying in my own quiet time. I'm studying um, in John where it says to love each other as I have loved you. And that's what I'm studying. I want to learn to love like Jesus. And so as you're thinking about your Christmas, as you're thinking about the people in your life, you know, we can get really grouchy towards our moms or our mothers-in-law or, or, or our father-in-law. We may have unforgiveness for a friend or for our husband, or we may not want to go somewhere that's far away. We may not want to drive and or have two Christmases in town or whatever you're doing. But I, I just want to invite you in to think about your Christmas differently this year. In John, go with me to John, um, it's, it's in John 15. I just love the book of John, you guys. I cannot get out of the book of John. And so as you're thinking about your Christmas, think about Jesus, okay? So John 15, Jesus was, it was his last night with the disciples, right? He, it was at the Last Supper, and he's, he's telling them what's important, what's really, really important to him. And you guys, he said this over and over, starting in John 14, and in John 15, and I'm pretty sure it started in uh, John 13, and he, yeah, and he, yeah, it's right there in John 13. So right there in John 13, verse 35, it says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You guys, the world is watching. You may have lost relatives. You may have people that are looking at you to figure out what a Christian is like, and they will know we are Christians by our love. By the way that we love people that hurt us or are unlovable, they will know that we belong to Jesus. And then he repeats it again, John 15, 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. You guys, this Christmas, rest in Jesus. Ask him to help you. When you're, ask him to help you to spend regular time with him. And on the days that you can't, just rest in him and ask him to meet your needs and, and spend time with him. The help club studies are perfect. They're really short, but it'll help you stay focused on Jesus. They're very Christ focused. Our Bible studies at the help club in our new book, It's the Wise Woman Abides, are Christ focused. Um, but ask him to help you to focus on him and ask him to help you to love others deeply and to love and to lay down your life. And I'm gonna pray for you right now. And I see there's a prayer request. Thank you for, for leaving that, Princess Wright. Thank you for leaving that. I'm gonna pray right now. And um, and if you have, if anyone has any other prayer requests, God, I, uh, I put them in the comments and I'm gonna start praying right now. And then, um, and then I'll look at all the comments. But I wanna pray for us all to rest in Jesus, to just let him minister to us, to know that, uh, he's always speaking to us, us. It's not as hard as we think. Thank you, Rebecca, for the song this morning. I talked about the song. I noticed Rebecca joined us. So thank you for that song. I'm talking about that song today. Look at that song. Listen to that song. It's called um, Listen. Um, and I, I'm going to put it in the comments today. Um, but just rest in the Lord and let him minister to you. Ask him to meet your needs. Talk to him all day long. Pray with your children first thing in the morning when they wake up. You guys, you've got to pray with your kids. Pray that they'll have a good day. Pray for the Holy Spirit to speak to them. Pray for their hearts to be filled with love for their siblings. Pray, 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 you guys. Pray for your kids. And then love one another like Jesus. Love the difficult people in your life like Jesus. Ask Jesus to fill your heart. You guys, there's a verse. I love this. This is the last thing. I'm sorry, I forgot I was gonna talk about this. It's in Ephesians, and you know the Word of God says, and I've talked about this before. If you've been in Help Club, you know that we talk about this all the time, that you have to ask to understand the love of Jesus, okay? So you have to even pray to understand it. And so it's Ephesians 3, and it starts in verse 17. Okay, so let me read this to you. And it says, uh, it's in the end of verse 17, Ephesians 3, 17. And I pray, you have to ask God to help you to understand his love. Okay, that's another biggie. Ask God to help you understand his love. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. I don't know about you guys, but I want to be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. But I pray this prayer every single day. I ask Jesus to help me to, I pray that scripture so that I can understand his love, so that I can love other people. 
okay? You need to operate out of a, a place of the love of Jesus Christ, a full love of Jesus. You can't operate out of bitterness, unforgiveness. You have to operate out of, a, out of the love of Jesus Christ. What that means is you have to be so filled up with his love so that you can give it out to your children, so that you can give it out to the people in your life that are unloving. I mean, the people that you don't really want to be around. You have to ask God to fill you up first. So I'm going to pray this over us and leave your prayer requests in the, um, in the uh, comments too. I'm going to pray that too. Okay. So God, I thank you for every single person watching. I thank you, God, that you are with us. I thank you uh, for King David and how he strengthened himself in the Lord. God, help us to take the time to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. God, help us to take the time to love people like Jesus. God, I pray that you would show us how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Give us this, that understanding that only you can give us. Help us to understand your great love so that we can give that love to other people, to our children, to our husbands. So God, I pray for every one of my sweet sisters as they're going into Christmas, that they would go into it with a different attitude, that they would let you fill them up every day, that they would talk to you every day, that they'd strengthen themselves in the Lord, that they'd still and quiet their souls. God, that we would get our stuff done in the power of the Holy Spirit. We would do nothing apart from you, not even going shopping, God, even before we step foot in the mall or shop on Amazon. We would ask you for help to be frugal and to stay within our budget. God, that we would do nothing apart from you, not even shopping, not even cooking. God, that we would do nothing apart from you. So God, help us to stay in your love, to remain in the love of Jesus Christ as we're going through this Christmas. Help us to plan prayerfully with your help Help us with everything we do. Make our money go farther. Lord, I see some prayer requests for some, from some people that need help financially. And God, I pray that you'd help all of our money go farther this Christmas. And I pray that we would be so loving and kind and good. We commit all these prayer requests to you in Jesus' name. And I'm going to go through the prayer requests real quick. Let me see here. And if you left one, go ahead and... Uh, does anyone else? Okay, so Princess has one for Marcus, Montreal, Brittany, Charlie, Braden, Bryson, Caden. Uh, divine protection, I agree. In favor and breakthrough, health and money, financial help. And uh, for Anna Marie, prayers for her home and her marriage. I pray a blessing over Anna Marie's home and her marriage, that you would strengthen her marriage, Jesus. And in her home, that she would feel your, your peace. And I do pray for a new bedroom. I do pray for that, Jesus, for... I love that Princess is praying for everything. God, we want to pray for everything and come to you for everything. And I pray for Leslie as she's driving from Nebraska to Florida with three little guys. That's a lot of stress. Give her grace and safety as they go and let them feel your presence, God. Let them feel your presence, Jesus. Oh, and Janelle, oh, her friend Jeremy's heart has stopped. Um, it's in the hospital to have five kids. God, I ask for your intervention right now. I ask Ask for your hand to be on Jeremy right now, God, that you would let his heart beat. And when it comes back to beating, let it beat for you. Do a miracle. Let the doctors be astounded that you healed him. And God, let this bring his family closer together in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for guys, for joining me. Please share the video if you haven't shared it. It really helps us a lot. And do a, go to helpclubformoms.com. All of our Bible studies are there, or you can buy our books on Amazon. We, we use every bit of that money. We get almost $5 per book, and we use it towards the ministry. So thank you guys so much for everything. And, uh, oh, and Roxanne, I pray for Roxanne to be able to sell her truck. Jesus, help them in their finances. God, do a miracle in their finances in Jesus' name. Thank you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.